Hello, Michael again. Is a meteor storm coming on November 21st, 2019? Well, let's find out. Let's go over the information I've dug into. Why some people think the seemingly out of nowhere meteor storm or intense outburst is going to happen, and some history of the Alpha Minocertids meteor shower. Stick with me to the end because I want to make absolutely sure you understand what we're getting into so you don't spend an hour freezing later this month for no reason. First, I'm not a fan at all about the media articles I've seen put out about meteor showers, and here's why. There's really only two important displays to be aware of, the Geminids and the Perseids. The Perseids in August and the Geminids in December. These are displays that easily produce rates around one meteor every 40 seconds at their peak, or about 100 an hour. And that's on top of the normal background rate during the summer of about 20 meteors per hour. And then I only really care if there's a new moon during the meteor shower's peak. Most meteors are just washed out by the glare of moonlight. There's lots of meteor showers. There's pretty much one going on all the time. There's the Taurids, the Leonids, the Eta Aquarids, the Orionids. But see, most often, these don't produce much more meteors than what you can see during any late evening, any time of the year, and especially in northern summer. If you really want to see meteors that bad, find a dark sky, stay up until after midnight, and stare up at the sky for 15 minutes. You'll probably see three or four meteors pretty much any night of the year. Now there are some exceptions, though not recently, and media attention these minor displays sometimes get just baffles me. There's a background rate of about 20 per hour that's already in place, and then the meteor shower, like the Leonids, outside of a few special years are adding 15 meteors per hour? The Taurids will add a whopping five meteors per hour at their peak. Think about it this way. You'll see five random meteors for every Taurid that you see. Now the Taurids are pretty cool for another reason, but I'm not going to get off into that tangent right now. So when I see a few websites hyping up an incredible display, perhaps even hinting at a possible meteor storm, oh boy, I'm going to have to do some digging on this one. All right, so what is a meteor storm? A meteor storm is considered a meteor shower that exceeds a rate of 1,000 meteors per hour. Zenith hourly rate really means if the source of meteors is directly overhead from where you're standing and looking up, this is how many meteors you might see in a given hour. The meteor shower in question, of course, is the Alpha Minocertids. Normally, these would produce a negligible number of meteors. But this is a weird display. Dutch American astronomer Peter Janeskins, and I hope I'm saying that right, of the SETI Institute and NASA Ames Research Center predicted back in 1995 that a stream of dust might encounter Earth in late November. The Alpha Minocertids had produced short outbursts in the past, 1925, 1935, and 1985. The most recent one at the time, the 1985 shower, briefly peaked with a ZHR of 700, and the earlier ones produced rates closer to 1,000 crossing that threshold for a meteor storm. These are high numbers, but the shower itself is incredibly short, lasting just 30 to 40 minutes. The Perseids, by comparison, take weeks from start to finish, and the peak lasts a few days. So while we're talking about a rate of, say, 700 an hour, we're really talking about half of that happening over a half hour. That's impressive, but it isn't anything like the notoriously bursty Leonids. In 1833, there was a display that had to look apocalyptic to its contemporaries. The storm produced up to 200,000 meteors per hour, and they lasted for an entire night. November 21st, 1995 came, and as predicted, there was an outburst. The result was just 400 meteors, max ZHR this time. So far, the smallest of the outbursts we've seen of the Alpha Minocertids. But some really good news came out of this one. Armed with modern photography equipment at this point, the general orbit of the dust producing these meteors was nailed down in pretty decent detail. That should, in theory, make future displays more predictable. It also means we found a new long-period comet that produced this dust trail. It apparently only visits the solar system about once every 500 years or so, and we don't know which comet. Dust trails get pushed around by Earth's gravity and other planets. Even the solar wind pushes these little specks of dust into different orbits. And our Earth's orbit changes ever so slightly from year to year, and our moon wobbles us around just a little bit. All of these factors make knowing when the next outburst might happen a bit of a math problem. So for example, when someone conjectured in 2017 that there could be an outburst from the Alpha Minocertids, I thought, well, maybe, but what's the evidence? After the date came and went, a study of the shower concluded that 127 meteors detected on an all-sky camera for the entire night 
Out of those 127, just eight were from the Alpha Monocertids. That's less than one per hour. Most years for the AMS are quite like this. One meteor per hour if you're lucky. So there's a really, really low basement and a pretty high ceiling for what this meteor shower is historically capable of. And here we go again. It's 2019 and the media is chatting up the AMS. Color me skeptical. But wait, Peter Jeniskin's name's on this one. He accurately predicted the 1995 outburst and he's predicting another outburst in 2019. Okay, so this seems promising but I can't help myself. I need some source material. What is actually being predicted here? Predicting meteor trails like this are a bit like weather forecasts. There's probability, past history to consider, there's failure modes. What's really happening? Here's the Central Bureau of Astronomy's electronic telegram from Peter Jeniskin's and Esko Lietin's, Lietin's, Lietin's actual report. Let's break it down. They report that a significant return of the Alpha Monocerated meteor shower is expected on November 22nd, centered at 4.50 UTC. Past dust trail calculations, Leotin and Jeniskins in 2003 were re-evaluated, assuming now that past outbursts were caused by the one revolution dust trail of a long period comet with a shorter orbital period of about 500 years. So 1995 happened, and we had a rate of 400 ZHR. What's being said here is that under slightly different assumptions than the last time, we could encounter this narrow dust trail and a significant meteor event might occur. If the trail was crossed through its center in 1925 and 1935, then the Earth passed 20,000th of an AU from the trail center inside the trail in 1985 and 1995. The heliocentric distance difference of dust trail minus Earth orbit will be 16 thousandths of an AU in 2019. Okay, there's a lot more to unpack here. What these astronomers are saying is that if we assume that in 1925 and 1935, when Earth saw 1000 ZHR from the AMS, then the slightly lower counts seen in 1985 and 1995 can be attributed to a missed distance on center of about two and a half Earth widths. I mean, this is not a lot of wiggle room considering that you can fit roughly 30 more Earths between the Earth and the Moon. In astronomical terms, these are razor-thin margins. And this telegram is saying that we will miss this dust trail's exact center by just two Earth widths in 2019. That's trying to say that based on these new aforementioned assumptions, that we could have a display at least as good as the display in 1995 or 1985. Now for the bad news, good news, I guess? Good old uncertainty. Because of the uncertainty of where the trail center is, the distance could range between 36 thousandths of an AU and nada. Depending on that distance, peak rates in 2019 could be about similar to, or in excess of, those observed in 1995, when the zenith hourly rate was 400. Now where does that 36 thousandths come from? Or basically double the distance from the 1995 dust trail encounter? That's based on the old measurements of the dust trail's orbit, which are listed here. With the comment far, meaning even though we're talking just a couple tens of thousands of kilometers, it's possible that this meteor storm is a total bust. But if these new calculations are correct, we are also within the margin of error that this could result in a full-on meteor storm. Okay, one last note. Past dust trail encounters were very brief with a full width half maximum of just 0.29 hours. That's just saying that the center of the encounter will be at 450 UTC and the peak will last for 15 minutes on either side of that time with some stragglers before and after. Likely shorter if we miss the center by any appreciable amount. All right, so what's my verdict? You could probably guess that since I'm making this video in the first place, you'd think that I was at least a little bit excited about it, right? I do think this event is actually a little bit legit this time, however, we need to give a ton of wiggle room for failure modes. This could be nothing because of a tiny miscalculation, or it could be a good display, or maybe it could be a meteor storm. I'm holding out a little bit of hope that some of these calculations are correct, and I hope we have something to show for it. We should also be out there observing and photographing if you're willing to brave the cold, and counting too if possible. This could help researchers like Peter and Esco further refine these predictions. We do end up getting a decent display, and clear skies, I'll post up my own results right here and share some details on what I did to capture it. Please leave in the comments any questions or thoughts that you have about this meteor display. Like it, share it, and subscribe. Check out some of my other cool videos if those look interesting to you. Until the next time, get outside and learn something new. Man, these names are hard. Somebody told me Dutch was easy.
and Escolietinens. Escolietinens, actual report. Let's break it down.